All right, so we've been working on more muscle chains, and we've been talking about um, myofascial chains and meridians in the body. Uh, but right now, I'm going to talk a little bit more about muscle chains. And because we're just talking about a muscle chain, we're talking more about a function. And when we get into the myofascial stuff, there's some function there, but we also start to get into coordination and restriction and stuff like that. So a little bit different conversations. Um, and one of the parts that we're looking at today, uh, and I'm just going to label this as the back body chain. There are, um, there are a number of different descriptions of muscle chains throughout the body or biomechanical chains, functional chains in the body. So there's no one set of muscle chains that rules everything. In fact, if we change the body in different postures, we actually can put different muscles together to coordinate to create a muscle chain. So quite a different variety and uh, no one set, no one correct set of muscle chains. So in standing, a lot of times we're going to have, this is the back side of a body, by the way, the hamstrings, this area, the calves, um, underneath the body, we would have, or underneath the foot, we'd have part of the footbed muscles and the arches. These are going to work together to help um, they would actually help to support the body being erect. They would, they would prevent things from collapsing backwards. The glute would be part of a different chain if we were trying to press. But in yoga, we do a lot of poses where we try to stabilize fairly flat. So for this muscle chain that we're going to talk about, we're also going to use the glutes. And then we're going to get into some of the small muscles in the low back. We're going to get into uh, part of your quadratus lumborum and part of your um, multifidus. Yeah, multifidus, wonderful muscle, very, very important in this. And then this is going to ride up and down, way up towards the skull, and the muscles that are going to be coming off the head. The kind of the partner muscles for our description for right now, these muscles are going to come all the way from the, the head. They're going to loop down all the way down to about the shoulder blades and then even lower. That's a couple of other muscle sets. Um, and these are going to be uh, some of the capitis muscle um, uh, services. Anyway, these upper, upper neck or upper back muscles that come from the head basically down along the spinal column line. And these are kind of like the brother and sister to these low back muscles, and they're not quite the same erector spinning muscles. Uh, so they're a little bit unique. So all of these muscles need to coordinate together as a muscle chain when we do something like a handstand or a headstand. The order of firing might change a little bit. If we're in a first warrior pose, the back leg is going to have to work all this stuff. The front leg is going to function a little bit differently for its, for its functioning muscle chain. And then if we put somebody into something like a Virabhadrasana 3 or third warrior pose, where we essentially have one uh, down leg, not as complex a drum, the down leg and the hip that's associated with it. And then we're going to have a, a leg that extends back. So there would be a knee and back here into a foot. Sorry, these are colliding. And then we're going to have lumbar, thoracic, cervical curve, and a head. Almost in proportion. For those of you that are as nitpicky as me, hopefully that's a little bit easier to look at. So the down leg is actually going to work a little bit different than the back leg for the muscle chains or the functioning chains that we need. On the back leg, uh, the calf, not so important, not that important at all. We are going to need the quadricep to help make the leg more straight. Uh, we're definitely going to need some hamstring work, because remember the hamstrings actually help pull the leg this direction. Yeah. So the hamstrings, as they come up over the sit bone, they do help pull the leg back a little bit. Um, they also would help 
sorry about that. They also would help to bend the knee. We're using the quadricep to stabilize the lower leg into extension because it's going to be a knee extender. And then we're using the hamstring to actually help hold the femur up. So a little bit different work. So we absolutely need this hamstring. Now, if we were going to talk about myofascial stuff, this um, back body line would come right up into the sacrum from this hamstring area into the sacrum and then connect into the low back and bypass the glutes. And so that's a myofascial thing. For the functional muscle chain on this, we need to have this hamstring coordinate with the glute. So this is going to be the back leg. So this is the, the, the posterior portion. We need this glute to actually help pull the, the femur up a bit. Yeah. So not only is the glute going to help pull the femur back, because that's part of what the glute does, it extends the hip. So that's hip extension. But it's also, it can also help pull the sacrum and part of the pelvis back this direction. So it can, it can perform both these actions at the same time. And what's so important about that is as the glute pulls this direction, it's going to make it easier. It's going to help take some of the overarch out of the back. So as we pull the glute this direction, the lumbar curve is going to get slightly less. And we need some lumbar curve. If there isn't any lumbar curve, then we'll lose part of our glute function because the glutes fire less efficiently or not as well if the back is rounded. So if you have a student, or if it's you, who is doing that third warrior pose and you try to lift up the back leg and your low back is rounded, we're going to lose all of this muscle chain work or efficiency. We could still do some hamstring, quadricep, and some glute, and we could even essentially fire the low back a little bit. But if there's no lumbar curve, if the lumbar is like this, then we've got to expect that the leg is going to be going more like that. And you can lift as much as you want, but these muscles are going to fire less efficiently. So we need these muscles to actually help create a little bit of lumbar curve and to actually create a, a little lumbar curve. So with the glute firing, um, and pulling the leg up, we can cultivate a little bit of a lumbar curve. So these curves are actually facilitating each area, each segment of the chain. If we want to consider these like chain links, each one is facilitating the job of the other, which is super important. And if, for example, we don't fire the hamstring, then the work up here at the hip is doubled, just to throw out a number. And then the work at the low back is, is uh, potentially even more. If we turn off the work at the hip, the hamstring will never make up the work, and the low back is, gonna, is probably going to uh, have to strain. It's either going to hyperarch or lose its arch totally, so it can go too much or too little. And whatever it is, if you do get into the light lumbar curve, even if the glute's not facilitated or it's not firing very well, this middle chain here, that small lumbar curve, it's going to be so hard to stabilize it because the, the glute muscle stabilizes the pelvis. So if your pelvis isn't all that steady, and, and by that I don't mean that you're not falling over, I mean that it's just not stable. So you might not be falling down, but it doesn't mean that you've stabilized this middle link in our muscle chain. So if this is stable, then the lumbar working muscles, where we're right over here, into this um, uh, quadratus, some of the erector spinae, and the multifidi, or multifidus, that stuff's got to work. So those muscles, if you don't have this stability and say you're hypermobile and your leg is actually really high, if your leg was really high, you'd probably have too much arch and you really wouldn't be able to extend it without the hip work. 
if you're hypomobile and your leg is really low, then you don't have the lumbar curve. And with this rounded, you, you most likely, uh, I would wager uh, almost always, you would not be able to use these low back muscles to actually create a curve, let alone do this extension that we've talked about that is so important the axial extension of extending both directions through the spinal column in the appropriate appendages. So for our muscle chain down here, ooh, huge importance whenever we get into this third warrior type pose, I've got my pens all mixed up, ideally we might take an arm and we might even extend it this direction. What I would do early on is I would take my arm and I would extend it down to the thigh, it's my hand and my elbow, uh, and support this. So I'd make all the tasks here, all the jobs of these corresponding links. By the way, we are going to have a whole other link up here. And we would probably say that this is going to be some of the erector spinae. Some of, the, some of the muscles just lengthen the spine. And up in here, we're going to start to get into the trapezius and the rhomboids and some of the other shoulder muscles. And that's also going to make up part of uh, this upper link that's up here. And if you were to look at maybe like the Anusara loops and spirals, this starts to coordinate perfectly. But we have muscle groups that work throughout here. So for the muscle chain, this is usually where it's going to break down. And if we're too low on this, a lot of stability is going to help. If we're way too high, the stability is going to help. So if we can't get the stability here, we just can't seem to perform it, it's probably a really good idea to create more stability with that, or maybe have a block and put an arm down on the blocks what, before you start extending the arm out and refine these middle links. So these three are probably going to be the primary for this pose. And they're going to relate to your hamstrings, your buttocks, and these low back muscles. I'm going to put these as a family here. Which is going to be a combination of your erector spinae, your quadratus lumborum, and your multifidus. Quadratus much less than the two other. The multifidi and the other erector spinning muscles, the most important in there. The multifidi, even though it, it travels well up the spinal column, the thick part of the, of the multifidus is totally associated with the lumbar, lumbar sacral area. So this area right in here for a multifidus. And if you've been in the other sections where we covered how to activate the multifidus, how to activate it in a yoga pose, and how to actually um, create a, a um, postural facilitating yoga posture. So the posture actually facilitates the firing of a specific muscle or the specific length in a muscle chain. So postural facilitation of firing these. If you were here for that, uh, we could start firing this most specifically in some modified poses. And, and this pose, if you'd gotten up close to this level, a modification might be the hand on the thigh or a hand on the block. And then just focusing basically um, on these three links, the leg, hip, low back stuff. And that's going to be associated with you being able to extend here. Um, I know this is getting a little bit confusing. But the down leg is, is very important on this as well. This has to have that rooting component. So this would be a different buttocks formation. And if that buttocks, hamstring, quadricep of the down leg, uh, mostly stability. Hope you like the drawing there. Mostly stabilization. So hamstring, quadricep, calf stuff. The big thing is stabilization so you're not falling over. And then the second part of that uh, goes into the rooting. And I think there's some other video clips that we've talked about for rooting. 
So this hip needs to actually um, facilitate some of the downward push. And that's a different muscle chain. That's the muscle chain where on the, on the down leg, it's going to be a muscle chain. I'm going to really mess up my markers. The hip has to not only fire and stabilize, but it has to draw the sit bone slightly down. The quadricep is going to need to fire, the calf is going to need to fire, and the footbed muscles are going to need to fire. And when all that happens well, they'll be just uh, sometimes dramatic, but uh, on average, just a slight bit more force pressing down. And you might be able to catch some of this in a different video clip. And that downward pressure is going to not only help hold the leg straight and help to create a slight bit of upward force that helps the spine extend. So a little bit of under firing in this rooting, the spinal column will have a greater tendency to collapse. And more downward rooting, it's going to have a better tendency to extend. And part of that's muscle chain. And then part of the explanation on that uh, actually goes into some of the myofascial stuff uh, and, and part of a tensegrity um, concept where this downward activation, a different muscle chain, totally different than the back line muscle chain. This would be a different uh, kind of a rooting muscle chain. As you press down there, even if there's not a lot of movement of the bones, the tone in the fascia will come all the way up. If this is well connected, all the way from the hip, the tone in the connective tissue uh, seems to increase and help stabilize this. And some of that connective tissue in those fascial bands are correlated with parts of this back line chain and even have cross body connections. So the down leg and this one is going to have a cross body connection back into this hip, this leg that extends back. And so if it's well coordinated, the downward rooting is actually going to help the leg extend back. Even more than just being stable, it will actually facilitate the actual movement of the extension, not just facilitate the ability of the limb to stabilize and potentially extend. So this is part of our muscle chains and this is a third warrior pose. And if you are running into issues with this, look into the video clips or some of our classwork on uh, creating a yoga posture, posturally facilitating the activation of the chain links. Yeah, and that'll be a very, very helpful and very useful one. Some of them are modifications and some of them are just other yoga poses. All right, study this and hope to see you soon. Thanks.